In this video, we'll go over the basic setup and configuration of Visual Studio Code. What's up, YouTube? This video is intended for beginners. I'm assuming you have zero knowledge of code writing. So if you're just getting started, you're in the right place. Hit that subscribe button and let's get started. The first step to writing code is picking a code writing application. There's a ton of them out there like Notepad++, Sublime Text, Atom, and my favorite, Visual Studio Code. Not to be confused with Visual Studio, VS Code is a free open source application. It has great support from the community and tons of extensions. The other ones out there are fine. There's nothing wrong with them. This is just my preference. In this tutorial, we'll go through how to set up VS Code for web development. I'll walk you step by step through the installation and configuration, and we'll look at some extensions that will make your life easier. So the first step is to install VS Code. Go to code.visualstudio.com slash download. This is a cross-platform application, so it works on Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. Go ahead and download the appropriate version and begin the installation. I'm going to speed this up for time. When you get to the section, select additional tasks, I would recommend checking everything. This just fully integrates VS Code into your operating system. You may or may not see these options if you're on Linux or Mac OS. Once the installation is complete, this is what you'll see. As you can see, VS Code can be used for many different programming languages. But for now, we're going to focus on basic web development, which includes HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So we're going to set it up for that. Let's have a quick tour. On the left side, we have the sidebar, and at the top is the Explorer. This is where you'll find all of your project files and directories once you have opened a project folder. Next is search. It's pretty self-explanatory, but this will allow you to search within your project files, and there's a find and replace functionality. Next is source control. Here you can integrate Git, uh, but that's beyond the scope of this tutorial, so we'll cover Git in its own video later. And next is debug. Again, this is beyond the scope of this tutorial, but VS Code has great debugging capabilities. And next we have extensions. We'll talk more about extensions in a minute. At the bottom, there's the Manage Cog, and in this menu are Settings, Keyboard Shortcuts, and Themes. And at the top, we see Command Palette. Command Palette is a really cool feature. You can also get to it by pressing Control or Command Shift P. And here you can search for just about anything. So if you want to open a file, or change the theme, or check out the keyboard shortcuts. And you don't have to complete a word. You can even type words together, and it figures out what you're looking for. It's really cool. It saves a lot of time. So let's check out the keyboard shortcuts. There are a ton of shortcuts and you can customize them. Now I would encourage you to learn as many as you can as you go. The more shortcuts you know and the less you use the mouse, the quicker and more efficient you'll be when writing code. Now let's look at some settings. There are only three settings that I would recommend you change right off the bat. Now these are just my personal preference, so you can set these however you like. First I like to increase the font size a bit. I have a big screen, but I don't want to strain my eyes. The code needs to be easily read, so for the purposes of this video, I'll change mine to 22. Next is tab size. I prefer two space tabs instead of four. When writing a lot of code with multiple levels, four spaces tends to move the code too far to the right for my liking. Lastly, I'll search for word wrap. I like to turn this on. This will prevent long lines of code from going off the right side of the page. Next, let's look at themes. There are a few built-in themes, and I'll preview each one for you quickly. Some of these are just ridiculous in my opinion. There are a ton of additional themes that you can search through and download. A popular one is called Material Dark. But I actually prefer the default dark theme, so I'll stick to that one. Let's move on to extensions. So in the sidebar, go to extensions, and the first one that I would recommend is called Live Server. This one is really popular with over 4.5 million downloads. What this extension does is it sets up a local web server so that you can see the changes made in real time without having to reload. It's a must have for web development. The next extension is Bootstrap 4 and Font Awesome Snippets. Bootstrap is a CSS framework. Basically think of it as a template. This extension will help you to build websites based on Bootstrap. And I'll have a dedicated video for Bootstrap later. The next extension is JavaScript ES6 Snippets. JavaScript is a programming language that spans front-end and back-end development. In web development, JavaScript is key. You'll be writing a lot of it, so these snippets will be helpful. Now let's look at some basic functionality of VS Code. I'm going to go to the Explorer and open a folder. I've created a project folder for the purposes of this video. Now that we have our project folder open, I'm going to add our first file and name it index.html. VS Code has something called emit. Think of Emmet as shorthand. With it, you can easily write a lot of code quickly. 
Here I'll demonstrate creating an HTML page. You can do this by pressing exclamation and you'll see that Emmet has popped up as a suggestion. Now hit enter. There you have it, a basic blank HTML web page ready to go. Easy. Now again, I know you're just beginning and you probably have no clue what all of this is, but I'm just demonstrating the capabilities of VS Code. You don't have to know what any of this means. We'll get into the actual code in the next video. Other things we can do is type div, then hit enter, and this creates a div tag for us. I can quickly create a list by typing ul enter, then li times 4 enter. I could just type dot class name, and that will create a div with the class of class name. I can type input hash foo dot bar, and that will create a text input with the ID of foo and the class of bar. And if you just type input, you'll see suggestions for creating an input button, checkbox, date, email, and so on. Now these suggestions that you're seeing pop up are called IntelliSense. This is a built-in feature of VS Code that suggests options and helps you to complete your code. To show you more of IntelliSense, I will manually create an input and define the type. When I create the parentheses, IntelliSense gives me all of the valid input types to choose from. Another feature is auto close tags. So if I type left angle bracket, div right angle bracket, it will automatically create my closing tag. So that's the basics of VS Code. We'll go more in depth in upcoming videos. If you like the video, a thumbs up is appreciated. And if you want to be notified of new videos, hit subscribe and the bell. Thanks for watching.